we're live. Oh, the preview doesn't have me in it. Hey guys, what's up? This is Casey. And Coach Tom. And this is Shot Science Overtime, number 208. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're getting out there, but we're not getting there very fast, Casey. Yeah, well, I mean, we've been doing it for a while, and uh, we're happy that you guys stopped by, and let's talk about some basketball. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so how we normally do these... Uh, live shows is that we have a topic that we like to talk about at the top of the show, something that we think is interesting to you guys that maybe will help you become a better basketball player, maybe cut out some of the learning curve. Yeah. And while we're sending or while we're talking about that, you guys are sending us your questions or comments about basketball answers that you want to have answered or sure. questions that you want to have answered. And we'll do our best to answer as many of those as we can sure. after we talk about our topic. Yep. Um, so we got people showing up. We got, oh, uh, one Mo Gain, 23, what's up? And Otman, El Karaz, hey guys, what's up? All right. All so right. it's awesome that you guys are showing up right now already. Um, we want to make sure that you guys check out uh, shotscience.com where you can get the shirts like we have that really helps support us in, uh, you know, making all of the cool stuff that we can make for you guys. We can and, also get hats, right? And if you want a hat, we can try to figure that one out too. Yeah. Um, uh, that's not on our website, but we can get those specially made for you too. Um, but you can also check out the instructional stuff on the website, follow us on all of our social media stuff, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Um, and please help tell people about shot science because that would really help us kind of get things rolling and it would be awesome. Um, so send us those questions because that's really going to help us, uh, at the end of the show when we need to start answering those things. Sure. Um, let's see here. Uh, looks like we have... Spy, Spy Master Jimmy, howdy, King Sappy, hey, what's up? Awesome. Okay, so um, we're going to get into answering our, our, our topic right now. Send us those questions. Yep. And uh, all right, let's go. So our topic for today is the secret to shooting. You know, and, okay, go ahead. And this is something that will help you guys almost immediately become a better shooter. Yep. Uh, you don't have to put any effort or work into it. It's, it's something that... You know, we don't like to tell everybody, but <laughs> we we think it's it's if you're here, you're you're special enough to know what the secret is. <laughs> right. 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 Well, if you've been with us for a while, you know that as well. So what's up? Uh, well, OK, here's what's up. Um, one of the things that that I ran across recently that um, kind of got me to thinking about, uh, you know, uh, shooting in particular, and that is. Um, I saw this, this uh, post where somebody was saying that they had this special thing that they could help you learn to shoot instantly. Uh, and th that is so far from what happens re in reality. It's, and uh, it doesn't make any difference if it's who do or what. You're not going to be able to do that. Shooting comes through, first of all, learning all of the mechanics of how to shoot the ball per, uh, correctly. And most everybody that, that I've ever come across who is uh, into shooting uh, people, hmm, teaching people how to shoot the basketball, their mechanics are all really close together. Uh, once in a while, there'll be somebody who has an aberration that they want to push, and, and that's okay. But we just feel like the stuff that we're doing is pretty well, well accepted in the basketball world. And it doesn't make any difference if it's junior high, high school, college. Uh, and I think probably the pros are on the same page as we are. And so the thing that's really important for us to remember is that in order to become a better shooter, it takes time. Um, and conscious effort. And really, really important effort uh, in, in trying to do the thing correctly. Um, we have a, a, a young guy that's 26 years old. It's never had any shooting instructions before. And so he's kind of going through this process of trying to FIO or figure it out. And, and we're working with him to help him do that. Uh, he went through week one and, and it was a bit of a struggle because he had some muscle memory that was not good. And so we uh, tried to take and, and engender some uh, what we thought were much better uh, uh, fundamental skills. And he started to come, uh, pick him up. He came back again yesterday, and it was a marked difference from the first day. And I asked him, I said, well, how much you've been to, uh, working on this? Well, I, I try to shoot around every day. And uh, he's got a job, certainly, and so he doesn't get much time to, to shoot around. But he was really working in an effort to get it right. Well, well here's the thing, is that... <laughs> It doesn't matter if it's basketball or anything really in life. Yeah. There is no shortcuts no. to, especially skill development. And if somebody is out there offering you that stuff or making that their pitch, you should be very wary. Yeah. Um, because one of the things that, that we're about is 
making sure that your shot is as simple as it needs to be and you've eliminated all the variables and complexities that make shooting you know something that is impossible to keep consistent and repetitive right um, but um, we would never come out and tell you here's the number one quick fix this will have you shooting better in 30 seconds you know that kind of stuff that that's just not the way that this stuff works um, so when you hear that from somebody else or you get that email or you see that on Twitter or whatever, you should instantly uh, have the red flag go up. Yes. yes. Um, but, uh, you know, you can become a better shooter. Oh, no question about it. But it, no it, it comes down it. to how much you want it to happen and what work you're willing to put into it. Right. And also, I think it's important to have the right information yeah. and to always be looking at your skill development from the point of view as being your own coach. You should never just do something because you were told to or whatever. Yeah. You should always be thinking about why am I doing this? When do I do this? How do I do this? And hopefully that's something that we provide for you a little bit. But you, even if we tell you, you should be thinking about why yeah. and how and when. Yeah. Right? Exactly right. And one of the things that we've found over the years, and that's a lot of years involved, is that um, often kids are given the wrong information when they're growing up or information they don't understand. Uh, and one of the things that we do when we're trying to teach somebody how to shoot a basketball or do any uh, a skill in basketball is first of all demonstration and then we talk about what we, they need to do and then we tell them why they, want, they need to do that. And when you uh, this is the kind of thing that's really frustrating for young players if they're in a situation where the coach is yelling at them to block out, block out, or box out, whichever the term they use, and they have no idea what that means. They haven't spent any time really in, in, in practice situation where they're learning how to, the footwork of blocking people out and how to make it happen. And that is true in so much of, of youth basketball today. And so a lot of players come up the line and, and they don't have really good skills. And, and unfortunately, I think there's a, probably a, a lot of situations where uh, there are not coaches even the higher level that have those kind of skills to teach people either. And I don't, I'm not trying to make, make it sound like I know everything because I know I don't. But the thing that I do know is this, is that in order for people to be able to understand what it is they're going to do, you have to explain it, demonstrate it, and tell them why you need to do it this way instead of another way. Yeah, and, and also when it comes to something as complex as shooting, typically... If you have been working on your shot and you've been putting all the elements together, maybe there is like one thing that maybe a, a coach or even yourself sure. can, f you know, kind of pinpoint on and say, okay, you need to start elevating your elbow a little yeah. bit more, yeah. or you need to um, have a nice soft follow through, have a soft enough or whatever, something that is kind of a quick cue or something like that. Yeah. What we're talking about in terms of like the quick fix stuff is somebody that is telling you that they can revolutionize your shot in like, you know, uh, today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In 15 minutes or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, that's something you should be suspicious of. And also you should never let yourself fall into that trap of thinking that it's that easy. Yeah. It is um, not that because, easy. you know, even if you become uh, a 90% shooter, you know, you still have 10% that you can improve on. So yeah. you should still be striving to do that. That's very true. Um, and also, you know, you got to keep maintaining this, this, uh, you know, skill that you've developed. If you, yeah. you know, set down the guitar for 30 years and you try to pick it up again 30 years later, maybe you can play it, but it's not like you played it when you were, when you set it down the first time, yeah. you know, yeah, really same true. thing is true yeah. with basketball. You got to always be kind of re refreshing all that stuff. Yeah, you really do. And, and. Uh, that's one of the things I think is really important for us in the off season. We often talk about uh, in the off season that this is what you should be doing. You should be working so much on your shooting, so much on your ball handling, so much on on uh, moves or uh, defense or uh, footwork. All that kind of stuff is really important, uh, and it's really important in the off season because once the season begins. Um, and you have a coach or a couple of coaches that are coaching your team, they don't have enough time to coach you up individually uh, for very long anyway um, during practice sessions because practice sessions are, are broken down into skill, uh, um, group skill, even if it's individual, but group skills as they go. And so uh, the time gets eaten up for practice really quick. So everything that you can get done 
before you start playing in the preseason, that is really important. Right. You spend the summer where you're really working on those ball skills, whether they're shooting or, 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 or ball handling or passing or whatever, uh, then that's when you, that's going to make you stronger once the season begins. That's, that is really important. Okay, we're going to take a quick timeout before we continue okay. the rest of that. But I want to ask our question of the day yeah. because we've got a few people here. We can ask that question now. But our question of the day is the one that we ask every time that we have one of these yeah. live shows. It's super important to us because it lets us know what's going on and wh who is here. Uh, but we want to know this question. Where are you located in the world? That's right. We want yeah. to know if you are from Africa, if you are from uh, China, if you are from Ireland or... Lithuania. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, so let us know where you guys are, are in the world. We are in Santa Cruz, California. So we are, you know, south of San Francisco in the United States. And uh, we just love to hear where you guys are from. Yeah. And also, is there a place where you want to go to play basketball? Like, is there yeah. a different country that you want to go to? Um is there one that you can you can think of? I, I think the Philippines would be a cool place because it, it seems be. like they are so nutty yeah. about basketball. Yeah, really are. Um, really are. Yeah. See, we got Spymaster Jimmy, who's from Portland, Oregon. All right. Blazers for life. <laughs> Blazers from where? Blazers for life. The Trail Blazers. Okay. Um, uh, so let us know where you guys are from, and we'll try to you know hit back the people that let us know. Also, tell your friends to come check us out right now because we we really would love to have more people here yeah. and get some more questions right. and answer, and send us your questions too. Uh, one Mogain 23 is from New York. All right. Awesome. All right. New York. All right. New York's a good scene for basketball for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So getting back to the topic, we just want to reiterate the fact that there are no shortcuts with any of this stuff. No. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And really, when you're putting together your approach to developing your skills, you need to also be thinking about uh, kind of all the, the pieces that you're putting together. Right. So you don't want to just say, oh, I saw Coach Tom say this, and, and that's what I'm doing now. You yeah. should think about, oh, why was Coach Tom saying that? Yeah. Oh, he's explaining it here. Does that make sense to me? I think I'm going to incorporate that into my mechanics or whatever. Um, and you should always be thinking about that kind of stuff. You really should. And, and you know, most young players uh, take so much just for granted. In other words, a coach told me, we had a student yesterday. In fact, we had two students yesterday and happened to be playing uh, or going to play at the same school. And uh, their coach was telling them that what they should do as they move back by the three-point line is they should sh start their shot from right at belt level and then bring it up and shoot it from there. Well, if you do that, you're never going to get a chance to shoot it because they're going to be in your face so, much, so quick you can't get it off. And so that's one of the reasons why we teach, and I'm sure most people who teach uh, uh, good shooting, is that the ball always comes to your set point right away. That's first. Well, and and we don't drag it through. Now, let me just explain this real quick. We have an area that we didn't invent this, but we picked it up. And it, it is this, that the area that we refer to as the box and the box is an uh, um, imaginary. Well, it's imaginary, and it begins. The top of the box is right at your chin, and the lower uh, bottom of the box is right at mid thigh. Okay, and then it's as wide as your body. Every time that you catch the basketball and you have the ball in that box, you're exposing it to the defense to knock it loose. And so, if, what we really teach is go over the box, go under the box and get the ball above the box as quickly as you can if you're going to shoot it, okay? Yeah. And, and you know, the other thing, too, is that you should not have to adjust your shooting mechanics in terms of the distance you are away from the basket. Exactly. You want to have your shot be consistent, repeatable, and the same across the board. So if you're shooting, uh, you know, from... <laughs> Five feet, it should be the same as when you're shooting from 25 feet. Exactly. And, you know, obviously there's going to be some uh, adjustments that are made for generating power, but your upper body is not for power. It is for that fine it, focus, it delivery is directional. of the basketball. It's directional. It takes the, puts the ball where you want it. That's And it does, it, it does offer some power. There's no question about that. But the way we deal with it is this, is that uh, your arms and shoulders – really are going to take and generate probably about 20% of the total power that you're going to have when you shoot. Okay, and so where's the rest of it come? Well, it comes from the core muscle groups, which are those large muscles in your, uh, your abdomen, your hips, your butt, uh, your lower legs, all of that. That's where most of the power comes from when we shoot it. And a lot of people are unable to really make that work very well because this is what happens. 
what they do is they straighten the legs, and then as soon as the legs are straight, then they shoot the basketball. Yeah. But what happens is that we refer to that as a two-part shot. As soon as the legs are straight, they're finished. They're not producing anything more for you in the way of power, and so all you're left with is 20%. It's a sticking point. It is. And the things that are really important about it are these, that it will almost always cause a flat shot and a short shot. It'll be short of the basket, and it will be flat. Oh, and, well, it, what it does is it forces you to use the upper body as a power generator. But it, And it can't gener generate well, enough power. It, it can't do both things where oh. it's generating power and being... Refined, refined, you know, aiming for the hoop. Exactly. So you're kind of you're you're giving up that accuracy yeah. just to get more power because you've yeah. already blasted out the power. And you know the other thing too is that when you think about generating, we're we're going way far afield here. But <laughs> if you're thinking about generating power uh, and you're thinking about the way that your shot kind of works, you think about it kind of like you know the space shuttle where it has those big boosters that get it up into the air. Those things fall off and, and the spatial continues and then they're able to find focus where that thing ends up going. Um, and, you know, the, the blasters are going to be your legs and the powerhouse. Yeah. And then the delivery system is going to be like your upper body and, and, and the space shuttle going to its, you know, the space station or yeah. something like that. Yeah, very um, true. So you really have to work on connecting those pieces. It shouldn't just be legs extend, jump, stop, extend the body, extend arm, stop, you know. Those sticking points kill power at every single point. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that we teach people and, and to kind of recognize what's going on there is this. If you shoot the basketball, and as soon as you release it, you're saying, uh-oh, there's not enough power. Yeah. Really what that is telling you is that you have not connected the legs to the arms. That's simple. And so we take and, st and, and really emphasize, like Casey's describing, a one-part shot. A shot that begins at the bottom of your feet and it doesn't end until you get to the end of your fingers. It's one flow and you should start your shot before the legs finish. That way you catch that power. Now, here's the secret to it. Is that <laughs> here's you, the secret. Yeah, here's the secret. When you get the right power utilizing the one part shot, the shot will probably feel effortless. Yeah. Meaning that it was, you, you didn't have to put much extra into it because you caught all that leg power and usually it's going to be a successful shot for you. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's wrap up our, our topic. Okay. Um, so all right. I'm know, just getting going, Casey. Yeah. Well, well, we can go off on some of these questions, <laughs> but okay. So the, the main takeaway that we want you guys to know is that there is no secrets, no shortcuts, no magic yeah. pills or anything like that. And don't believe anybody that tells you that. There, there should always be a very um, kind of consistent uh, learning process. Yes, evaluation of your shooting. Yeah. There, uh, there is nothing that should uh, be just like a quick fix. You should always be looking for refining that and yeah. and just consistently addressing it. Um, and you know, you always will have to work for it. There's no shortcuts. Yeah, you know, another thought that kind of jumps into my brain as I'm listening to Casey there, um, and it's a little off the topic uh, in a way, and that is one of the things that we'll ask players, uh, they're shooting, let's say, from the wing, and we usually have them started about 17 feet from the basket, uh, and they're not hitting anything. It's just not going in. And then they hit one or two, and then it's not going in. And I oftentimes will stop uh, the practice and say, Okay, let me ask you this question. If you were to shoot 20 shots in a basketball game and there were 23 pointers, 20 three point shots that you shot, how many do you think you should make? And you, you'd be so surprised at what they have to say. Well, I think I could probably hit 15 of them. A dream world, a dream world. And that is not really something that happens. Once in a while, you may have a day where things are just going right and the Stars are just located right in the, star, in, the, in the sky and all of that, and maybe you'll hit more of them. But in the course of a, a basketball game, let's say you take 10 threes, even the best shooters probably are going to be around 40%, maybe 42 And that's real. That means that you're going to make 4 out of 10 of those shots. And once in a while, you'll make 6 out of 10. And then there'll be days when you get one or two out of 10. And so the reality is you want to take and work on uh, getting all of those things working for you and then not be put off by the fact that you're, uh, you're not hitting the baskets. The ones that we see body language, 
that uh, we can tell right away what's going through their mind. And the body language is, they sag, they get this sad look on their face. Why? Well, I'm not making shots. Well, you know, that's when we come up with this question, how many do you think you should make? And, and the more you practice and the better you get, probably the more you will make. Yeah, and you know, if you go look at the greatest shooters that are out there, you know, Steph Curry or the, you know, it was like Ray Allen and Clay and you know all these guys, they're spending hours and hours in the gym when the yep. other guys aren't. Yep, exactly um, right. Yep. E even even some of the other guys that spend a lot of time, those guys are spending even more time. Yeah, and so you know, if there was a quick fix, they would know about it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so. Um, we want to just reiterate with you, if you guys want to become better shooters, you have to put the work in. And also, also the real secret for us, the secret when it comes to shooting is the three pillars of practice. Yeah. So you have the first pillar, which is working diligently on getting your mechanics all in line. So that would be something like the form shooting drill where you're paring everything down so to its you know singular element and removing all of the variables from the shot that don't need to be there right. the second pillar is game speed game intensity work exactly. Exactly. where you are working up to game speed and game intensity on getting the shot off maybe you add in defense a defender and you're working on the pressures of actually getting those shots off in a game off a dribble off the sh off the pass all of those things and then the third pillar is actual game experience where you're playing in a game setting whether that's a pickup game whether that's a traveling team game school game uh whatever you're in the actual flow of the game, getting those skills working. All right. And, let me, and they let me build on each other. Let me jump in real quick here. This is something that I hear uh, quite often. All right. Is this uh, a short thing? Okay. It's not long. Uh, and it, uh, uh, somebody will tell me, uh, or I'll tell them, this is what I want you to work on this week. Uh, okay, coach, That's I'll work on it. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to be meeting my buddies uh, uh, a couple of days this week, and we're going to play after school. That is not going to get it done for you. That's only one, that's that, one pillar. Exactly. And what you really need to do is if you're working on some element of the game, and I don't care what element it happens to be, you have to put individual practice into that where you haven't got four or five, six other guys there because that's when you lose your focus and you start to just kind of play the game. You just become a player and maybe not a very effective player. So you have to plan for your own progress uh, to occur because you're spending your time individually to get it done. Yeah, okay? you, you should have taken thousands of a shot before yeah. it ends up happening in a game. Yep, yep, right? yep, yep. Um, Okay, so we're going to shut down that topic right uh, there. Really hard for me yeah. to shut it down. Casey. If you guys have more questions about that stuff, obviously we will answer those yep. uh, if, as we have time. Um, our, again, our question of the day is, where in the world are you guys from? We had some people that are from Portland, Oregon, New York. Uh, and our second question was, um, where would you like to play basketball in another yeah. country or something? And Spymaster Jimmy says, playing in Japan or somewhere over there would be cool. Yeah. Uh, that would be cool. I, isn't that where Zen played? Uh, Zen, uh, yeah. One of, one of our shot science guys. He, uh, he plays professional basketball in Japan, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like it's a really cool place. Yeah. And it looks almost like kind of surreal where when he was sending photos and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and they, they play really good basketball there. Yeah. And they bring a lot of Americans, other foreign players to come over and play as well. Yep. Uh, there is definitely some really great international basketball places, but let us know where you guys would play. Oh, here's uh, Finn Huss Kiborn from Vegas. Oli'i, one of our old buddies from United Kingdom. El Sean, I'm from Chile, Latin America. All right. Um, cool. So keep sending those to us and let us know. And also go tell your friends to check us out right now because that really yeah, helps yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's jump into answering your guys' questions. And if you have questions, please send them to us because it looks like we uh, we could use a few. And if we get, wait till the end, we don't always have time. So yeah. send them to us. Um, let's see. This one's from King Sappy who says, how should you set your feet when you shoot? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I'm going to tell you what the, uh, is a very common thing that we hear, and that is square your feet up to the basket. We don't teach that. Well, that's that's the super old school well, thing that still persists with some people. It does. It does. And and the reality, when we teach people how to shoot, we want a staggered step. And the staggered step is we want it to be about shoulder width apart so we have good balance. And the other thing is that we want to have the toe of the non-shooting foot at even with the instep of the shooting foot. So yeah, we get a little stagger. Basically, they fit in kind of like that. Yeah, and one of the reasons it happens is if I've got the ball and I'm over here on my shoulder, then I'm probably not going to be as accurate. As soon as I take and change that stance, 
then the hand comes over and now it's more in line with our eye. Envision this, if I was shooting a pistol and I had the pistol out here, I'm not gonna be nearly as accurate as if I got that pistol right here in line with my eye and the target. Okay. Yeah, and you know, the other thing to, to consider is the fact that your arm, your shooting arm doesn't grow out of the middle of your chest. Yeah, right. So it doesn't make any sense for you to shoot completely squared up. Yep. Um, and you know, uh, if you think about it, turning, giving, getting that slight shift to that side, you're lining everything up. So it's your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your your hip, your knee, your ankle. All of that is all in line. And if you think about it, shooting is basically a one-handed uh, basically thing is, yeah. to deliver the basketball. Right. And if you're using the other hand as kind of part of the delivery system, that's going to be an issue. But it should all line up because that is going to give you that that perfect line to the hoop. Yep. And if you don't have that slight stagger that way with your feet and your body, then you're not gonna get the right delivery. Exactly. Um, I hope that helps, by the way. Yeah, and we have videos on that. Go check that yeah. out. And we will be making some new videos on that so yeah. that, that they're updated. Um, let's see, this one is from Spymaster Jimmy, who says, does having a special mentality help you shoot? Yes, you should have the mentality that you have confidence that will go in. And yeah. the way that you get that confidence is from consistent, repetitive, diligent, purposeful practice. Yeah, exactly. And you know, <laughs> one of the things too that sometimes we forget is that when we shoot the basketball and we have this go through our mind, I hope it goes in. I hope it goes in. You haven't done it enough. Uh, yeah, because what you're saying there is you don't trust yourself. And what you really want to do is take a more positive approach. That's down. That is down. And if it doesn't go, We'll, go, we'll be going again, and that one will be down as well. Yeah. And that sets up a more positive approach to shooting than it does, I hope it goes in. I hope it goes in. Yeah, and you know the other thing, too, is to have the mentality of living in the moment. You don't worry about the shot you just missed. You don't worry about the one you're going to take next. You just worry about taking that shot right now and knowing that it's going to go in. Yeah. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Literally, there's more misses in basketball than there are makes. Yep. And, you know, one of the things that we often throw out there is this, is that you want to have a short memory. Yeah. Okay, didn't go. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Because if and, you dwell on it, it's going to come back and get yeah, you. And the next time you shoot the ball, is it going to go in? I hope it goes in. Screw that. The idea is we want to be very positive. That is down. Do that you, is I down. Mean, do you think that people like Michael Jordan or Steph Curry or LeBron James or, yeah. or you know, fill in the Damian Lillard, do you think those guys are worried about yeah. the shot going in? Yeah. Please go in. They never say, please go in. Yes, right. They're like, that's in yeah. every single time. And that's, you really, you build that up through confidence. Yeah. And, you know, you that's made in practice for sure. Yeah. Um, this one is from Jimmy again, who says, this is a bit of an odd question, but does practicing outside affect your game inside? Only if it's windy. I mean, otherwise it doesn't. Uh, you, you're not, you know, it doesn't make any difference where you're shooting as long as you've got a basket that's the proper height and you're working on those skills uh, the way we're talking about right here. And if you're doing that, it doesn't make any difference if you're inside or outside unless you're outside and it's a little breezy because it'll oftentimes blow the ball a little off course. There's always going to be an adjustment for anything. Yep. Um, yep. You know, one of the biggest adjustment issues would be a difference in the height of the basket. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, obviously... The, the you know if you're playing on an asphalt it's a little different than the hardwood floor but the ball bounces up the same way the ball bounces yes um but you know most people they spend most of their time playing outdoor basketball yeah. unless you know they have some kind of access to a yeah. uh, in, indoor gym yeah. but you know most people don't have that so you know there is always a minor adjustment but yeah, yeah i wouldn't worry about that one yeah spy master jimmy again says start at the belt level really yeah that's not a good teaching point oh. uh you know he, you, you know, you were I talking, didn't hear he, what he said. She was talking. He said something about start at belt level. Oh, uh, you were talking no, about that. No. Yeah. I mean, if you put the ball in the box or have the ball low, it doesn't matter. Even if you're trying to shoot or if you're just holding it there, somebody's going to take it from you. Yeah. And because they've got their hands right out in front, and if you expose the ball in that area that we referred to a while ago as the box, they've got their hand all over the ball. Yeah, and you know one of the things that they I know when I was a kid and everything that they teach you is that you know you you have the ball uh, you know up under tucked over here over here or under your chin or whatever it is you never have it just sitting right there because if you have it sitting right there somebody just smacks it down smacks it up I mean it's literally the yeah. easiest place for somebody to take it from you it really is it really is um, 
this one is from Long Valley Films. He says, my offhand comes off the ball too early. How can I fix it? You know, um, it, it, they, prob it probably doesn't come off too early. Well, yeah. Because, you know, for someone like me who shoots, I, I literally let my hand fall away as soon as my arm starts to elevate. So there's really not a too early unless it's before you even start, you know, doing the elevation. Sure. Uh, one of the biggest problems is leaving it on way too long. Yeah. And then it influences the, the track of the ball. Yeah. So I, in fact, that's that's a good point to kind of bring up is one of the things that happens so often is that we're shooting the ball here and the assist hand. And we don't refer to that as the guide hand because it does not guide the basketball in any way, shape or form. You don't want it to is that oftentimes the thumb will swipe the ball as you shoot it if it's still in contact with the ball. And so it's going to cause the ball probably to go right or left, and that screws up your shot. So as you come up to shoot it right here, that other hand wants to fall away, and it becomes a one-handed shot. And e most everybody can deal with that once you practice a little bit. And we have our, our students, uh, we have them shoot one-handed shots in the beginning uh, from about eight feet. And all of a sudden, they be oh, okay, oh, okay, and they begin to get it. Yep. Okay, this one is from Silver Play Button Without Consent. <laughs> is it okay to have a super high arc? Oh, uh, go it, ahead. Well, there, it is good to have a, a nice high arc, but it gets to a point, just like having a flat shot, where there's diminishing returns. Yes. So if you have a nice arc, it's going to follow that track of, I don't know what it is, 45 to 55, somewhere yep, in there, yep, uh -huh. degrees. If you start getting higher than that, then what you're basically doing is you're shooting a longer shot, which is going to drop your percentage down or your accuracy down. Mm -hmm. And so you want to kind of get into that proper range where you are maximizing the size of the basket that the ball sees. So, you know, the, the maximum usage of the rim. And you're also keeping the shot as short as it needs to be. Right. When you start increasing the arc, it doesn't make that, that target any bigger. It just makes your shot longer, which increases the the chance of it missing, right? Right, and one of the things that happens a lot when we have that sh uh, shot that has a big arc on it is it follows what we call a bell curve. It comes up like this and like this. And so the ball oftentimes is going to end up being short, okay? And so when we get into that flowing arc, which I believe they refer to as a parabola, it has an arc that looks like this. And you want the arc to uh, the highest point of the shot to probably be around as, as high as the top of the backboard, which is about 13, 14 feet. Okay, and so, and that gives you, like Casey, that gives, we're saying that gives you a nice target. Maybe we later, if we have time, we'll talk about the target. Yeah, but the, the, you know, the other thing is, is that when somebody says, you know, uh, it should be about the height of the backboard, you shouldn't be watching that as like your, your yeah. mental checkpoint thing. Right. That's like something where you should be recording yourself. I mean, one of the things that's so cool about these days is that everybody has access to yeah. a video camera, basically. Or a and, phone, yeah. And, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Not just... And not just a camera, but or, or a video camera, but like slow motion video. And so you can you can film yourself and look at every little aspect of the, of your shot yep. and see. Oh well, I can see here that the arc is you know way flat or it's way too high or whatever. And you can make it, the adjustments just by looking at that. Sure. It, you know that wasn't really a thing when when even I was a kid. Like of course people had video cameras, but it's like that was a lot of effort to do. Now yeah. you just pull it out of your pocket and yeah. and do it. Well, one um, of, let me cover this real quick. We happen to have uh, a shooting machine, and we keep that net, uh, and it's on all four sides, and we keep that net at about uh, 11 to 12 feet. And when we shoot the ball, we want to make sure that we're over the top of that about three feet, and that gives us the best angle. Some people uh, uh, believe that your angle or that your angle of attack should be as much as 60 degrees. That's just an opinion. And my opinion is it probably is something less, more like 45 to 55. Again, it completely, it, I think that's, it's arbitrary and there's such a range because yeah. it, your height also affects it. So yeah. a seven footer is not going to have the same release angle that a five foot person is going to sure. have. And so, you know, you should, the other thing is not to get too caught up in the numbers and in all that stuff, but to really find that, that range and stuff that works best for you. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, here's one from King Sappy who says, how do I stop airballing? 
Well, I don't know what you're doing, uh, so it's hard to tell you why you're airballing. But so what are a few things that uh, somebody here, might be doing? All right, here here is a, a typical scenario for airballing, and that is that you're releasing the shot too late, and so it is underpowered and probably short and flat. Okay, you remember if you were here earlier, we were talking about a one-part and a two-part shot. If you are shooting a, a ball late, it's probably because you extend your legs and there's a momentary pause that you don't, you can't even feel it. And then all you got left are your arms to shoot the ball with. And that usually is short. And like I said earlier, flat. If you get a one part shot where you actually, before the legs finish, the arms are already on their way. What happens is that you pick up all that leg power and you'll, you'll probably be a lot more accurate than you will be if you are, are, are shooting with a, um, a flatter shot. Yeah, that's right. Um, and also just bringing the arm down yeah. and... and bringing the ball down at the end of your stroke. That's really uh, a major problem for a lot of people. And that's one of the reasons that we use the net around our basket. Uh, and that, that's really beneficial. Not everybody can do that or have that situation, but we happen to have that machine there. And so you've got to get it up there about 14, 15 feet on the arc or it, doesn't, it can't get over the screen. And you know, I mean, if if you're if that's something that you feel is going to help you too, make something that is eleven yeah. or twelve feet tall, yeah, exactly. and stick that in front of you while you shoot. I mean, that I mean, that wouldn't be the first time I've seen somebody yeah. do that. Sometimes, you know, I remember seeing people that where they have their mom or their dad or their brother or whoever come out with a broomstick and hold that up in front of them. Yeah. I mean, that's an old one. Yeah. Um, so you know, you just got to make it work. And if that's kind of the visual thing that will help you, then use that. Right. Um, if you can do it without those props, that's probably good too. But you know, like I said, the, one of the best things you can do now is record what you're doing and really analyze the different aspects of your shooting right. me mechanics yep. or dribbling mechanics, whatever it is. There's so many cool ways to, to use that these days. Okay, so let's try to answer some of these quicker so that we can get through them. <laughs> um, this is from Fren Finhas Cabram. He says, I want to play in the G League someday. Yeah, I mean, keep working at it yep. and you never know. Yeah, that. We've seen a couple of people locally even that, you know, they went and tried out and they made the team, yeah. which, you know, that doesn't happen very often. But, uh, you know, just a regular person off the street made the team because they had the skills. Yeah. Um, this is Elshan who says, I'd like to teach basketball instead of playing as a professional player. Why is it difficult for me to shoot in the, oh, this is the, the next part. But he says, why is it difficult for me to shoot in the left side of the, off the dribble, like pull-ups on the left side? Well, I mean, first part is, if you want to take your basketball career or whatever in a different direction, you should just do it. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, it's your life. Yeah, and don't wait for an invitation if yeah. you want to do it. You just just set your goal. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we had a young student, um, and I think he was about 24 years old, um, uh, maybe three or four years ago. And his his dream, he had been, he'd gone to college, but had played for a little while, and then he quit, and then he quit school. And then he finally decided, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to go to Europe and play. And so we spent about two or three months with him, just kind of helping him get some of those and those things down. And in the end, he didn't go because he went on another path, but he could have just because he was driven by that. Yep. Um, what was the second part of that? He's having uh, having trouble getting the shot off going left off the dribble. Okay. That is almost entirely footwork. It is. And you know, I would I would suggest checking out our videos on that, the footwork for shooting, and also we have some of that on our website too. Um, but it's really comes down to, to the right proper footwork, one, two, step, stop, gather footwork. And also one of the big things that I know helps a lot of people is that the last dribble needs to be a real pop. Yes. It can't just be a regular dribble. Right. If you get that dribble down and really snap it and it comes back up to your hands, that will help you get the rhythm and everything. But slow everything down. Look at those those uh, videos that, that we did on that, and you can see the proper footwork going into that. Yeah, you know, one of the things that happens, just to throw a little more light on this, is that when we go to our, our, our weak side, whether it's our, our right hand or our left hand, we oftentimes do not rotate our feet and hips far enough, and that's kind of what Casey's getting at. If I'm going left, I end up standing almost sideways when I try to shoot. And so it's really hard for me to shoot back this way. But as soon as I bring those feet around, now I am able to address the basket in a much more, uh, not I don't want to say squared up because we don't believe in that, but in a much better relationship to the basket if you just bring that, that non-shooting foot around a little further. Uh, 
I wish yeah. I could be more complete on that. Well, it's hard, check our videos. Yeah, check the videos out because we show that and demonstrate it. Yeah. But it really is the stop gather uh, footwork and also converting that horizontal momentum into vertical momentum. A lot of people can do that going to the right, but going to the left, you have exactly. to really slow it down and work on it. And same things happens with left-handers going right. Yeah. Okay, this one is from, uh, I just saw it. Here it is. Danilo Dravkovic. Oh, man, I'm sorry, but hopefully that's close. How do I stop pushing the ball from my chest when I shoot? Well, okay. You uh, shouldn't start it at the chest, no, number you shouldn't. one. Just let me take and turn sideways just a little bit here. When you shoot the basketball, one of the things that we think is really important is that this is what the arm should look like. You should have the wrist cocked, and some are more flexible than others, but have it cocked. And you even have it a little low because you're in the, in the screen too. Right, right. And, and this arm part here, the elbow, should represent the letter L. And then over here where the uh, arm attaches to the body, that is the letter L. What happens is as soon as we bring this ball back here by our face to shoot it. Or down here. Or down here. Either way, it doesn't make any difference. Is that the ball is going to react differently when we shoot it. And what's going to happen is that we tend to shoot the ball by extending the arm. When we shoot the ball here with an L, one of the things that we really emphasize with everybody is that we finish the stroke with the elbow higher than our eyes. Yep. Okay, and that'll give us a nice arc. What happens is that when the, the arm falls back to a V, usually we have this kind of an extension right here, and the shot is flat. And, you know, the other part, too, is that a lot of people that shoot off their chest or in that area, they, they're doing that because they can't generate the right power. And so, so you should really be looking at your legs and your, yeah. and your feet and, and that lower core area and how you're generating your power. And also starting off, your, you should be using the form shooting drill and start off real close to the basket. Yeah. One of the biggest problems that we see with people is that they, they shoot these, you know, they're shooting at two or three feet away from the basket. And then they immediately run back to 22 feet and they're wondering why their mechanics are garbage when they get that yeah. far back. Yeah. And it's like you haven't built up that that progression yet you have to start close and work your way back so that you don't lose those those pieces of your mechanics that you work so hard to, to, yeah. to develop right 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 right, right. Um, so yeah okay, okay let's move on to the next one this one is from uh, one Mo Gaines who says do you still recommend the flop finish my elbow is usually straight and when I shoot the ball it goes left, right, or hits the back of the rim a lot. My hand release is tense. How can I fix this? Well, yeah, we do really think that yeah. the, the flop finish is really important. And let me just give you just a tad of background on that. Uh, it used to be years ago, and I don't know uh, if it's so much that way now, but coaches would tell you, snap that wrist. And they wanted you to take and have a really sharp snapping of the wrist. Well, what we discovered was this, and we weren't the only one that probably came to this conclusion, but when I snap my wrist, the ball spins faster. And when the ball is spinning faster, what we have is we have energy that is captured in that ball. The faster it spins, the more energy there is in that ball. And when it runs into the basket or the backboard, it usually is going to result in a long rebound. And what we found by just really working on just a very relaxed wrist, notice that my finger is just kind of, yeah, just really soft like that. It, and we still want to come off these two fingers, but the idea is that the fingers are relaxed. That so, spins so, the ball slow. Yeah, and so when it does hit the rim or the backboard, which most shots do hit some part of the hardware, oh, yeah. Uh, it will not just expend that energy and fly off. It yeah. will hit it and it will either deaden it or it will help it stay around the rim yeah. for that second chance to go in. Exactly. And, and, you know, the other thing, too, is that when you are doing the, the flicking thing or whatever, uh, you are also are adding so much tension into your shot. Yes. You need to really eliminate all the tension from any part of your shooting, but especially your delivery system in that shooting hand. So you can feel it like when you flick, there's all this tension in your forearm. But when you flop, there is almost none. And you're going to find yourself being way more accurate when you yeah. start working on that. And it may feel goofy at first, but you'll you'll get it to work for you. What? Uh, okay. So uh, let's answer one more question, and we're going to get out of here. we got to do it. Yeah. Um, let's see. This one is from 
Keith Langdon, who says he's a 47-year-old quadriplegic who has been mentoring, training, and coaching basketball players for 30 years. How yes. do you convince a high school player to change their shot when it is flat but sometimes goes in? Oh. <laughs> tell, tell them that they can, they can have more. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes players don't believe the stuff that you, you're trying to teach them. And so we do it by demonstration. I don't shoot the ball uh, anymore. I used to be able to shoot it pretty good. I didn't. I wasn't able to shoot it good as a young player. Because you when didn't I, know all the stuff I, that you know. When I was in high school, uh, I threw up bricks. The only thing I could shoot is uh, some little hook shots, and those were kind of iffy as well. So I focused on rebounding defense, that sort of thing. But after I got away from that, I wrote an article on shooting in 1968 that was published in the National Coaches Magazine about shooting. And I started to take up more interest in it at that particular time, and I got to the point where I could shoot pretty good, okay? Um, but the point, is, getting back to what we were talking about here, they have to believe you, and you maybe you have to have somebody that you can use an example. Uh, and just, you know, the, what we got back to when we first started today is that when we talked to anybody about any elements of the shot or defense or whatever, we're not only telling them, uh, what they should do, we're telling them why they should do it. This is the result you can you can get if you do it this way. If you do it the other way, the result is not going to be very good. Yeah. And so you kind of have to explain that to them. And and, and, it, and just all reference to to our our, our videos. I mean, th I, I think those would really help them to understand that. And you can go to Facebook, right? Well, go to our, go to YouTube. Uh, oh, right YouTube. Here, I'm or, sorry, or YouTube. Fa or you can go to our website too. Yeah. The other thing too is that. In, you could say to them, you know, look at the way that the ball sees the rim. The higher the arc, the the more usable area the target is going to have. Yeah. The flatter the shot, the less usable area the target is going to have. Because as you you know, the ball sees it. The, if you see it from above, you're going to see m what more usable area. If you come in straight on, you only are going to get this small little oval of space. Yeah. So if you have this higher arc, you are increasing the size of your target. Yeah. Hey, and kudos to you for what you're doing. That is that is awesome. Yeah. That is, and, and, you know, if you run into a situation where you kind of need some help on that, uh, they can come to YouTube and make contact with us. Or Twitter or yeah. Instagram, whatever. Yeah. And we will jump all over it to help you get it going. Okay? Okay. So thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. If we didn't get to your question, it's not because we don't like you. It's because we ran out of time. Yeah. Uh, please come back next week, and we will be, try to be here for you guys to answer those questions. Or you can send them to us on Twitter. Um, or in the comments, and sometimes we're able to get to those. Yep. But we don't want, we want to make sure that your question doesn't go unanswered. So exactly. um, we will do our best to answer them. Um, I'm not sure if these ones reload into the comments or not, but we will try our best to answer you guys. Send them to us again if you really want them yep. answered. Yep. Um, and we really appreciate you guys being here. Check out uh, shotscience.com. If you guys get shirts, and we would love that. And yep. also, we will post you guys on Instagram oh, and stuff yeah. if you send us pictures in the shirts. Yep. Um, Make sure you check out our Facebook, Instagram, and uh, tell us again where you guys are from. We want to yeah. know where, where yeah, you guys where are from. where are you from, exactly. All right, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next Thanks, time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.